This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one website platform that makes it easy to build amazing websites. Lately I've been learning to play the guitar. This instrument works fine, but the volume knob only goes up to 10, so an upgrade is in order. This is a great small project and provides the opportunity to explore some new machining techniques. The first challenge is how do we make a female version of the potentiometer spline? To do this, first I need to make a punch which matches the geometry of the spline. To machine the splines on the punch, we need to make a cutting tool. Alistair made a suitable cutting tool, off camera, and this works much like a gear cutter. I make the punch from 6mm silver steel, where the process begins with a simple facing operation. We then move over to the milling machine. By default I leave the vise bolted to the bed, but for this punch we need the dividing head which will allow the workpiece to be indexed. The spline we're copying has 18 grooves, so the workpiece needs to move 20 degrees at a time. This particular dividing head is Alistair's variation of the George Thomas VDH. I roughly align the dividing head to the mill axis and mount the faced off silver steel in a collet. I then put the cutter in the mill spindle. Clock and watch pinions can be made in much the same way, but the main difference here is in the groove profile. Pinions are machined with a very specific tooth geometry for efficient meshing, whereas here the punch is a simple 90 degree angle. I tilt the dividing head slightly off axis to provide relief for the punch, and engage the worm drive on the dividing head. Of course we need to know how deep to cut each groove, so I gently move the Y axis on the mill until the cutter just begins to scrape the surface of the workpiece, and this provides me with a zero reference. I can then move the mill axis by the required amount. Once all 18 grooves are cut, that's then the cross section of the punch shaped. The surface finish isn't great, so I clean it up with a file. In its current state, the punch is too soft, so it needs to be heat treated before we can put it to use. The punch benefits from a concavity ground into the end to provide some rake. The grinding pattern is actually quite pretty, so that gave us an idea for later. Now we're on to the fun bit, which is machining the brass to form the final knob. I begin by machining the inside, which is simply a hole in which the spline will be punched, and then a large chamfer to clear the potentiometer nut. Now let's test out the punch, which requires mounting the workpiece onto a press. 
Punching operations require a lot of force, so a liberal application of cutting oil helps reduce this. I'm very happy with the resulting spline. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Here's a Squarespace website I made about our anti-kithra mechanism. I started with a Clarkson template, which gave me an easy structure to build the website from. The Squarespace editor is based on this Fluid engine, which is a really intuitive drag and drop design system. You can add design blocks or pre-assembled section templates anywhere on the page. These are especially great for adding more complicated features like forms, portfolios, and product spotlights without having to design everything from scratch. One feature I especially like is being able to flip between desktop and mobile previews. The layout is automatically optimized for both views, so you can be confident in your website's appearance on any device. To try Squarespace for yourself, visit squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to www.squarespace.com slash Engineering to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. With that, let's head back to the main video. From this point, to hold the knob for machining, I use a superglue arbor. This variation includes an extending spigot to help with alignment of the component. This one, of course, is unnecessarily large because it was made for a different project, but here it will do the job. One of the reasons the superglue arbor is so useful is that it can be machined in situ, which makes it very accurate. Here you can see that without in situ machining, we're limited by the accuracy of the chuck. I can also machine the spigot in situ for perfect concentricity and for a nice fit in the spline for concentric location. The blank is slightly too long, so although unnecessary, I might as well use a centre to support the workpiece as I rough it to size. This reduces the risk of the superglue bond failing. I use a protractor to roughly measure the angle of the numbered face. It looks like it's nominally 45 degrees. Now it's time to machine the grippy part of the knob. Normally machinists would use a knurling tool, but instead I'm going to demonstrate a shaping technique. I begin by swapping the top slide with a modified alternative. I then mount a lever and fulcrum to the bed, which is coupled to the modified top slide. I could use the screw based top slide as I demonstrated in the D12 video, but the lever is much quicker and easier. This part of the knob is actually tapered, so I machine the taper using the lever feed, and then I apply chamfer before setting up to form the knurling. This method ensures that I cut the knurling at exactly the same angle to the taper.
the point. To remove the knob from the superglue arbor, I remove the spigot and tap a bar of aluminium located at the bottom of the spline. The bottom face of the knob has left over dried superglue, which I simply remove with emery paper. Of course, the knob needs engraving, and to mount it onto the engraving machine, I reinsert the punch that we made at the start of the video. Perhaps I could have done all the other machining without removing the punch, but due to the necessary relief, I'm not really sure that's a secure enough grip. Engraving forces, however, are much smaller. To mark the divisions for engraving, I simply use a pencil mounted in the lathe tool post. Pencil writes effectively on metal and can be easily removed once the engraving is finished. The engraver is a pantograph machine which works by copying the path of a stylus onto the spindle. I define the path of the stylus by following lettering. To engrave the numbering, I tilt the knob over at 45 degrees and align the pencil divisions with a mark on a special holder made to fit in the engraver. Near the start of the video, when making the punch, we hollow ground the end, which left a lovely pattern. So just for fun, after the engraving was finished, we mounted the knob in the grinder and used the same approach to generate that lovely pattern for the top face of the knob. To finish, we melted some wax into the engraving to help the lettering and numbering really stand out. For those of you who play the electric guitar and fancy that little bit extra that comes with the 11, Hazel has made a CAD model and the STL file is available for free download if you want to 3D print one for yourself. And that's it finished. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in the STL file to 3D print your own, or in reading Hazel's article on Alistair's anti-kithra mechanism, please do check out the Squarespace website in the description.